I mean, I'll, I will save well over six figures this year just by having a really good CPA who's making sure that I'm doing the right things, staying within the rules, but obviously working the rules to our favor. Welcome to the Whistle Way Podcast. My name is Kyle Whistle, your host with EXP Realty in San Diego. I am Brian Kochi, Media and Marketing Director at Whistle Realty here in San Diego. The goal of our show is to give you the tools, techniques, and tactics that you need to go out there and crush it in your business, whether that be real estate, mortgage, or really just any business out there. The way that we like to do that is to answer the questions you have for us. Rather than guessing what those questions are, we just let you ask those questions on thewhistleway.com. So you can ask your questions on there, join our Facebook group and engage with us and ask a ton of questions and find out some of the cool stuff we're working on here uh, at Whistle Realty Group. You can also uh, subscribe to the podcast, the YouTube channel. So if you're listening to this, you could also be watching this on YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you could also be listening to this on podcast. Um, and and join our referral network because a ton of people are leaving California these days. So we got a lot of referrals to give out and find out about our upcoming Media Mayor Mastermind events, which are uh, 16 hours worth of content. Some of these we're doing live in person over two days and some of these we're doing virtually online, uh, which we got over 60 people in our uh, current version that's, that's running right. right now, Brian. I, yeah, I keep uh, waiting to end it, but people keep signing up. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm all down good. For it. Yeah. So Brian, what's our question today? So I know you just got your law degree from lawdegree.com, um, which is not true. That's sarcasm. Um, <laughs> but I thought I'd ask you another kind of law question. Um, a lot of people, I think, when they get started, they go, oh, yeah, I'm going to get in real estate. I'm going to sell houses. I'm going to show cool houses. I'm going to make mo lots of money. But there's – and that's one side of the business. Um, another side that's often overlooked, especially for people just coming in, is the actual business side. And – kind of how it comes to structuring structuring a business. Even though, if even if you can join a team, if you join a brokerage, you're still your own business. So I want to go over some things. This is one of the things that I wish they taught me at business school. When you get started, what do you need to do? You, I mean, things like business license. How do you structure your company? Again, this is kind of suggestions. This isn't the be all end all. Um, but business license, tax stuff. Um, how do you structure your business? Do you put yourself on payroll? Like I, I don't, I want this to be like, okay, step one, this is what you're going to get into after you get your license. Yeah. Um, one of the most important things is to make sure that you minimize the amount of taxes that you pay. Um, and being set up with the right entity can help you do that. Um, so if you have an intention to make over $50,000 in commission over the next year, you should have an S corp. Um, I've heard of people in other states having LLCs. I know here in California, you cannot do it as an LLC as a realtor. So if you're outside of California, maybe it's different there. But here in California, the ideal entity to take your commissions in is an S Corp. Uh, the reason for that is that with an S Corp, you have to pay yourself a reasonable salary. And then everything beyond that you can take as distributions. Well, here's what happens if you just take your money as a sole proprietor you're going to pay self-employment tax on the entire thing, which is, I just pulled it up, is like 15.3% Yeah, it sucks. on the entire thing. So let's say your goal is to make $100,000. Well, you're going to pay 15.3% of your AGI on Wait, whatever's AGI? left over, adjusted gross income. Okay. So you're going to pay 15.3% after your write-offs on all that income. It's a lot of money. Then you're going to pay your actual income tax on that. So you're going to pay both. You're going to get double whammyed on that. Um, the benefit of doing an S Corp is that you have to pay yourself a reasonable salary. And yes, you will pay all of that, right? It's, you're going to pay your FICA and Social Security and all that stuff, which is similar to social or the uh, self-employment tax. But you just have to take a reasonable salary. What's a reasonable salary in your market? I'll let you talk to your uh, financial planner. But I would say somewhere in the neighborhood of like three to four to five grand a month. Somewhere in there is probably pretty safe. So, yeah, you can't be making 100 bucks a week. Yes. And, uh, and <laughs> getting 100 grand a year. Yeah. I mean, we're in California. Minimum wage right now is like $26,000 a year <laughs> is minimum wage So, it has right to be now. more than that. It's got to be more than that if you're in California. Let's put it that way, okay? So, you got to pay yourself a reasonable salary. 
And then above and beyond that, the rest comes as a distribution. So before we go to that, I want to talk about payroll for a quick second. Okay. Um, so someone hears this, say, cool. Let, I me, let do- me finish this part okay. and then we'll come back to payroll. Okay. All right. So let's just say we gave ourselves a $50,000 salary and we made 100000 So on that 50000 that's going through payroll, yeah, you're going to pay Social Security, FICA, all of that stuff. But then the remaining fifty, you don't have to pay that. You only have to pay your income tax on the distribution. So if you were set up as a sole proprietor, you're paying 15.3% on that entire thing. If you're set up as an S corp, you take your salary of 50, pay all the normal stuff, FICA, social security, all that stuff that's you know comprised of the self-employment tax. But then your distribution, you can avoid paying that self-employment tax on all of it. So let's just assume in that scenario that it was 50,000, you're talking about saving yourself 75 to 80,000 dollars. I'm sorry. Uh, Seventy five hundred to eight thousand dollars. Like that seems like a lot. That's a lot. Seventy five hundred to eight thousand dollars in self employment tax. That's huge. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Depending on what market you're in, that might be one or two or three transactions. Yeah. That you could save just by having the right entity set up. So that's huge. Um, what are the consequences of this? One, uh, like Brian was mentioning, I just told you you have to have a salary. You actually got to pay yourself. So you need to have payroll set up. Now, do you have to pay yourself equally over 26 pay periods? No. You could, in theory, pay yourself one time a year $50,000. You could do that. Um, So you do have to, but you actually have to pay yourself through payroll because you have to pay the payroll taxes, which are like self employment taxes. You got to pay all that stuff. So you are going to have to run uh, payroll. So you got to pay a salary via payroll. Um, And then you're going to now have an entity. So you got to file a tax return on that entity. All right, so, but let's assume in this scenario, again, we're gonna save, let's stick with 7,500 bucks. You're gonna save 7,500 bucks between the uh, payroll software system that you use and the cost for the tax return, I guarantee you is far less than 7,500 bucks. And now this tax return is different than the one that's due April 15th, right? Isn't isn't this one Corporate return, um, it depends if it's LLC or S Corp, but they're usually due a month earlier. Okay. Um, and then obviously there's different payroll options. What do we use and why do we, we use We use that? a system called Gusto. Uh, we used to use Paychex. I've also used some other company before. Gusto is a game changer. Um, Gusto is like when PayPal came into like the internet payment space, that's what Gusto did to payroll. Like completely changed it, just advanced it so much farther. And the beautiful thing with Gusto is they, they handle payroll for us. They handle um, like HR, they handle workers comp, and they're so on top of stuff. Like when COVID first hit and the, all these SBA loans came out, they were so on it. Like they were like, hey, just so you know, you can go apply for this you know, SBA loan and here's the paperwork that you're gonna need from us to help you get that loan. Like nice. just automatically doing it. You didn't have to even call them to get it. They were just preemptively sending this stuff to you. Like they're so ahead of the curve. Um, so huge fan of Gusto. Um, We'll put a link down in the show notes too if you want to get signed up. I think we have something that'll get you like a hundred bucks off. We have a code for you. So, uh, but or you can just go to gusto.kylewhistle.com. So then there is how do you set up your entity? So you could go through one of the internet companies like Illegal Zoom. Um, I would strongly recommend Legal Zoom. LegalZoom.com. It's, it sounded like illegal Zoom. LegalZoom.com. <laughs> um, but I strongly recommend that you actually utilize a local. Uh, attorney to set it up for you. It might cost you a little bit of extra money up front, but you're going to make sure you do it all right. You don't screw it up. Um, let an expert do it. Like, I mean, I hope you guys aren't still using like TurboTax and stuff. Um, it's time to step it up, right? If we're talking about making a hundred plus thousand, like there's a point where you graduate from TurboTax, you get an actual CPA um, that can really help ensure that you minimize your tax liabilities. I mean, I'll, I will save well over six figures this year just by having a really good CPA who's making sure that I'm doing the right things, staying within the rules, but obviously working the rules to our favor. Um, business license, you need one of those? Yep. So you gotta get a business license in the city that you do business. Now, so that's interesting. So do you need a business license in each city? So like we're in Santee, the city of Santee, which is in the county of San Diego, but we sell houses 
in the city of Carlsbad, in the city of... We have them in the cities where our offices are located. So we have an office that's in the city of San Diego, and we have an office in the city of Santee. So we have business licenses in both of those cities. Cool. Um, now, if it's different states, you have to do different... If you're in different states as well, you have to do... And that, that could there. vary, right? Again, we're in California, so I'm speaking for what we do. It, you might be in another state where you just get a business license with the county as opposed to the specific city, or it could be a township. Um, we don't have townships here, but so you would just need to know your local area, but you should have a business license. And, township East Coast? Uh, some, yeah, some areas on the East Coast do that. Uh, and honestly, like there was some grant money that came available this year during COVID and for the city of San Diego. And I had some friends who could not even apply for those grants because they didn't have a business license in the city of San Diego, even though their business was in the city of San Diego, but they couldn't even apply because they didn't have a business license. So you should have a business license. Um, and then I think in order to get a business license, you need a DBA, right? That I don't know. I think so. I've never, I don't think I've ever applied for my own business license. I did it a long time ago. Um, what else? We talked about getting an accountant. Bank accounts. Yes. So you should have a business bank account and you should have a business credit card. This is something that I, um, I admittedly went through a lot of financial turmoil, um, in the meltdown that happened years ago. And my credit was trashed. I had collections, charge-offs, all of that stuff um, went through hell. And for a while, I was just very adamantly against credit cards. It's like, I don't need them. If I don't have the money, I shouldn't spend it. So that was my mindset. For a long time. For a while, for years. Yeah, for years and years. And I finally got to the point where I got comfortable with credit cards again. And I am saving slash making so much extra money back just by having the right credit cards um, and we could literally do a whole podcast on credit cards, Brian. That would actually be a fun one. Okay. Um, but by having the right credit cards and using them for the right things, you can get yourself anywhere. You know, on, There's basic cards where you can get 2% back on everything that you do. Well, I'm putting like $50,000 a month on a credit card right now. 2%? That's a decent amount of money, right? Like that yeah. adds up. That's $1,000. Um, so it could really, really add up. Um, so I would encourage you to get a business credit card. If you're looking for the super simple, easy way to go, the Capital One Sparks card, the cashback card, it's 2% back on everything. Very, very simple. Like get yourself that and you should have one on the personal side as well. Um, um, business so, insurance. Uh, if you have, so there's a few different things. If you work for a broker, they should have errors and omissions insurance. Mm -hmm. um, so you should just be paying for that through your broker typically. Uh, there's general liability insurance for your business. So especially if you have like an office or something, you should have uh, business uh, general business liability insurance. You should have uh, workers comp insurance if you have any employees, because if they're out, like Brian drives around for us, drives a company car, drives to houses. If he were to get in an accident while he was driving, uh, we wanna make sure that he's covered. Um, so those are the, the three main ones you're gonna run into. General liability insurance, you're gonna have errors and omissions and workers comp. What else are we missing? I think that's the foundation. I don't want to get people too confused. That was a yeah. lot. I know it's a lot. Yeah. But like, I wish that when I, like I said, when I opened my business, I'm like, I don't know what to do. I, and I went to business school, but they never gave me a checklist of like, here are the things yeah. you need. And make sure that you have some sort of accounting software. Ideally, you're utilizing an accountant. Um, we have in-house that we handle it. There are some third-party systems. There's like, I'm trying to think of the, the best ones out there, but there are, third-party bookkeeping companies or accounting companies that can just sync up to your bank account every month and they can help you organize your finances. Um, so there's like how Gusto is to payroll. There's companies and, and just Google search uh, third-party bookkeeping services. There's a Mint. lot. Is Mint one? Mint is a, is a pretty cool one. Um, it's, I don't know. Like, I, I don't want to recommend anything. I used to use Mint like when I was yeah. in college, but that has been a little while. Yeah, um, I did too. I signed up and... Mint was great. I don't know if it still is, so I don't want to yeah. advocate for but it. But something like that. But I guarantee you, if you look in 
mint.com competitors, you'll find stuff that then you yeah. can do your research on. Yeah. So I don't want to make any recommendations there just because I haven't used anything recently. So I don't want to, um, yeah. I, I don't ever, just so you know, if you're listening to this, we'll never, ever recommend something um, that we don't actually use. If we give you links, yes, we have affiliate uh, agreements or referral agreements set up with companies, but every single company we ever plug, we are actual active users of it. So we'll yep. never, ever plug anything if we're not using it personally. Yep. Um, the had me thinking about something else, but yeah, you, you need to have accounting software set up because you got to track your money. So and this is, this is really big is you got to know what you're spending your money on, um, at all times. And you got to know what your return on investment is on the money that you're spending. So you really need to be tracking where your dollars are being spent and make sure you're not spending money in areas that you're getting no return, um, or that just have no value. Speaking of tracking, there's an app that actually Mike, this was his widget when he was on the podcast. You can track your mileage driven with Mile IQ. That's another good app. Yep. Yeah, that's that's good for uh, tax purposes too. So if you need to file stuff at the end of the year, so if cool. you need to, <laughs> when you need to, when you need to. We, yeah. we've, 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 I've met some agents. I go, I don't need to file taxes, right? Yeah, you need to file taxes. Uh, well, I mean, you don't. <laughs> if you make no money, you don't have to. I think you have to file no matter what. No, if you make under the standard deduction, you can avoid. You don't even have to file. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's whatever. I don't care. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of that. Um, if you have questions you want to have us answer on the show, you can go to the whistleway.com and ask those questions. But what we want to do before we wrap up today is go to our whistle widget of the week. This is something that we're utilizing in our business that is either saving us time, making us more money, or just helping us have more fun. What do you got for us today, Brian? So to my widget today actually came from, I went back on a shoot for the first time in a couple of weeks. Um, I've been having my guys go on shoots. They've been busy today. So I went and did a shoot. And I think I did. Do you remember how to shoot still? Oh, barely. Let's see if I can figure out how to edit. Um, but one one of my widgets in the past has been our 360 camera. We use the Theta V. Um, but I don't think I've done this, which is a way to utilize the Theta V. And that's using the Zillow 3D Home app. Um, and what that does is it puts, it's a really simplistic version of, creating a 360 walkthrough of a property. It gives a good kind of understanding of where everything is. The photo quality is pretty low, um, but it does give a good flow from one area to the next. It shows all the things. So that way there's been situations where a listing manager goes, is there a closet in that bedroom? And I only shot one angle. Well, we pull it up there. Um, but the thing that I really like about it and the really the true reason we use it is it helps boost our Zillow listings. They want to see you utilizing their tools. Their tool right now is their Zillow 3D Home. Um, and so using that, it's got some glitches, I'll admit. Um, but for the most part, one thing I will have to say, their support is one of the best supports I've ever worked with. I'll literally email them 15 minutes later. Sorry for taking so long to respond. Bro, I just, I just hit send a second ago. But anyway, Zillow 3D Home, uh, we use our Theta V to create those uh, 3D, tour, 3D Home tours. Beautiful. Uh, the one I'm going to share with you today, this is something that's become a game for us. We like to call it fill in the blanks. Um, when you get leads that come in, a lot of times you're missing bits and pieces of the leads contact information. So you might have a first name, but no last name. You might have a phone number, but no email address. You might have an email address, but no physical address. Uh, a lot of times you're missing bits and pieces of that contact information. And so this is a challenge that our agents go through every time they get a new lead is to try to fill out as much of that information as possible. Um, and we found a system that we're loving where you could plug in an email address and it'll help you find names and phone numbers and addresses, or you could plug in an address and find names, or you could plug in a phone number and find emails. You could just plug in one piece of that information. And a lot of times find all the missing pieces. Um, and the service that we are now using is called Ben verified.com B E N B double E N verified.com Ben verified.com. Um, it's been amazing to use. It's super accurate. It's like 25 bucks a month. It's one of the best investments I think we make in our entire That's business. That's really cheap. It's awesome. The last and one as we far used as was I a lot know, more expensive, wasn't it? The other one wasn't more expensive, but it was it was less good. way, uh, way, way, way less equipped. So binverified.com has been huge for us um, because now when you have a lead that came in is like... Um, you know, Silly Sally, and that's literally the name because all the system had was Silly Sally uh, at gmail.com. And so it just puts that pre-Gmail thing as the name. Like even sometimes we get them on Zillow that come through like that. 
when we can now take that email address, throw it into Ben Verified and be like, oh, this is Sally Smith who lives at 123 Main Street in downtown San Diego. Like, wow, that, the value of that lead just shot through the roof because I have all those other pieces of information. So is this Miss Silly? Silly, <laughs> silly is that you? No, it's not. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Or if you use the names people put in sometimes, dude. Uh, you'd have to use some asterisks. <laughs> it's cool. Well, hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of the show today. Again, if you have questions you want to uh, have answered on future episodes, you want to subscribe to the podcast, the YouTube channel, um, join our Facebook group, our referral network, or find out about our upcoming Media Mayor Mastermind events where you can learn everything Brian and I have learned over the last five and a half years of shooting video together. Go to thewhistleway.com. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of The Whistle Way. Thanks, guys. Wait, wait. Before you leave, I wanna share some more tips and tricks that we're using in our business to take it to that next level. Just click right here. And don't forget to subscribe, click right here.